The video you are about to watch covers examples of test taking strategies for OAA practice. Use it in conjunction with the OAA practice strategy handout. That handout deals with the Spark and Pub strategies, and you should have received it in class. Have that handout nearby so you can take a look at the definitions of each strategy as we go through the examples. The examples in this video come from the 2004-2005 OAA Reading 8th Grade Test. You may wish to look at that test. You don't need to, though, as I will discuss each question as an example. First, we'll look at reading multiple choice questions. Then, we'll look later at the extended answer responses. When you approach a reading multiple choice question, don't forget to spark it. SPARK is the acronym that refers to the different test taking skills that good test takers use to answer questions correctly. This refers to summarizing, positive and negative charging, answer narrowing, rereading, concepting, and keywording. We'll look especially at positive and negative charging, rereading, concepting, and keywording. Here's our first example. The question states, the setting at the beginning of the passage is most likely intended to show that Lincoln, this question deals with a passage about Abraham Lincoln, a literary story about the man's life. As you look at this question, you may ask yourself, what should we do? Which of the spark strategies should we apply? Let's start with rereading. Why? Because the question specifically refers to a portion of the reading. Whenever a question refers to a portion of the reading, make sure to read it. Sometimes the question will refer to a specific line or a paragraph. This one refers to the beginning of the passage. So go back into the passage and reread a portion. The rereading strategy can help you answer questions effectively. But rereading is not the only strategy we wish to use here. We can also use keywording. The keywording strategy involves looking at keywords in the answers to make sure you understand how one answer differs from another. I have circled keywords and phrases in each answer. You can circle or underline. And remember, on an OAA, you are free to write, so feel free to circle or underline keywords and answers. A is about a preference. B is about his comfort. C is about him returning to farm life later, and D is about the distance he lives from a farm. I've circled those words to understand the differences among A through D. This way I can quickly and easily size up the differences among the different answers. After I've reread the beginning of the passage and I understand each answer, I can understand very easily how to answer the question. Let's take a look at another example. The next question, which theme best applies to the passage, calls us to use the strategy of concepting. The concept strategy means that we understand a literary concept is at play in the question. In this case, the literary concept is theme. We would rack our brain to understand the definition of theme. Think about theme. In this case, Theme refers to the main abstract idea of a piece of literature. Some students understand it as the lesson learned. It is the insight into human nature that the story provides. And it is developed by specific details in the story. Character traits, plot events, conflicts, and so on. As I know that, I would look back into the text to see what the plot events develop. I can answer this much more clearly because I understand which concept the question is asking me about. In this case, the theme. Moving on to the next example, I read a passage from the Lincoln reading. Then I read the stem of the question. The author uses the phrase, his face lighted up, to show that Lincoln, what should we do here? This one calls for positive and negative charging. I can see that A and B amused and recall something 
refer to positive experiences, whereas C and D refer to negative experiences, puzzled and embarrassed. As I reread the passage, Lincoln smoothed his hair back from his brows a moment in deep thought, then his face lighted up. I can even go back and reread a little bit more around this particular sentence. I would understand that he is experiencing something positive. This helps me eliminate C and D. Often, when you are taking standardized tests, the answers will be positive or negative. That sharply distinguishes one answer from the next. And if you understand that the answer sought is on one of those sides, then you can eliminate one or more of the answers very easily through this positive and negative charging. Let's look at this question. What does this passage suggest about Lincoln? What should we do here? This is another case of key wording. I can circle or underline the most important words in A through D. The first one is about memory, second about curiosity, third about honesty, and fourth about popularity. Rather than reading a series of words, he has a sharp memory. I have focused on the most important word, the word that distinguishes A from the rest. I circle or underline it, and I can more easily answer the question. Now that we have discussed SPARK, let's discuss PUP. PUP is the acronym for Skills Used in Extended Answers. The extended answers refers to writing. You will write sentences, sometimes short paragraphs, to answer prompts. As you answer those, use the PUP strategy to ensure success. The PUP strategy includes pointing, unpacking, and planning. And once again, look at your handout to understand the definitions. Let's check out an example. The question prompt reads, what are two distinct parts to the passage Lincoln and the Whetstone? Using information from the passage, describe how Lincoln is characterized in the two parts of the passage. Write your answer in the answer document. What should we do? Well, the PUP strategy, unlike the Spark strategy, is a sequence. Do the first strategy, then the second, then the third, and use it for each extended answer. With Spark, you might use summarizing, you might use rereading, you might use concepting. You won't necessarily use them all for every single question. But for extended answers, use PUP for every single one. First, we point it. We understand how many points the question calls for. Two points. Your graders will assign two points to this question. The two can help us understand a number of facts about our answer, from the number of sentences to the structure of the prompt. Once we've pointed it, we move to unpacking. Unpacking means that I take a look at the prompt to try to understand exactly what the grader is looking for. When I see what are two distinct parts to the passage, that seems to link to my point value of two. So I'm considering two distinct parts of the passage, Lincoln and the Whetstone. But as I unpack further, I see it also asks about how Lincoln is characterized in two parts of the passage. So the two seems to refer to two distinct parts with two characterizations. The greater of this OGT extended answer, sorry, this OAA extended answer, must be asking for me to identify two parts with two character traits. The last step of the PUP strategy is to plan it. Plan it means that I look back into the reading to find evidence that I will use. Often, OAA graders are looking for you to pull evidence from a reading, sometimes even quoting it. The last stage of the PUP strategy asks you to plan by going back into the reading and underlining or circling evidence that you will use in your answer. If you can use PUP, steps 1, 2, and 3, you can improve your extended answer responses. Do not forget to point it, unpack it, and then plan it. Using these strategies, SPARK and PUP, once repeated again and again and again through practice, can sharpen your test-taking skills. And don't forget that these test-taking skills are not only effective for an OAA, they would be effective for an OGT, an ACT, an SAT, or any other standardized test. 
use these strategies, practice them, know them, and rely on them as second nature whenever you take a standardized test. We'll explore this more in class as we conduct practice tests for the OAA.